Yo, what's up? Bringing you the Ramobita Show 18. So in the developer live stream, we got a ton of information pertaining to Diamond Dynasty. So we're going to have a few videos throughout this weekend on to next week talking about some of the features and pretty much everything that is going to be in Diamond Dynasty. But in this one, we're going to be talking about Immortal Players, which are the end game rewards, the toughest players to get in the game and how you get them so right here you see three of the players that they've already showed out and their stats which look absolutely ridiculous we got babe ruth bob gibson and vladimir guerrero but the way that you get these cards so obviously you got to play the game and playing them through missions and programs they're not going to be available in the market which i think is a great thing i'm all about that grind i'm not really a fan of outright buying the best players day one and all that stuff so i'm glad that the top players in the game the best cards in the game are gonna be rewards from actually playing the game and grinding out the game and earning them yourself so if you see someone with babe ruth the 99 overall you're gonna know that person grinded the hell out of this game and earned it for themselves but the way that these programs are gonna work so there's kind of three different stages to this there is player specific programs which are kind of like player spotlight missions from MLB The Show 17, and these are low-end programs pretty much. They're going to be bronze players and silver players, but you're definitely going to want to do these. So each position is going to have their own set of programs. I don't know how many there's going to be, but you're going to have to do these to get progress towards these other programs. So basically, once you do these smaller-end programs, the bronze and silver tier, you're going to have to do career arc programs, and these are kind of big. So by doing the other programs, they give you progress towards these career arc programs. And one of the examples they showed was Larry Doby. And right here, you can see there's three different versions of him or four different versions. I've got the image up right now. But there is a few versions of this card and they give one of them to you for free. So this kind of works like the George Springer program where you get this card, you do some missions for him. And then you get you move on to the next card, which I like that system. And then obviously you end up getting the best version of this card. But as you can see, the best version of the card is not the final reward. The final reward is like a program souvenir. And this is what you're going to need in order to get these immortal players. So basically doing these lower end programs, which are basically player spotlight missions. Those should only take a couple games to do. Then you do the career arc programs, and I'm sure those will take a while to do, but by completing those programs, getting the souvenir little token, whatever it is, the completion of the program, that gets you the progress towards the immortal players. The other thing about career arc programs is that they're kind of tied in with the immortal players. So the other example they gave, a career arc second baseman gives you progress towards an immortal second baseman, which I think the immortal is Jackie Robinson. So if you want to get Babe Ruth, I think his position was left field. You're going to have to wait for a career arc left fielder or any outfielder probably. But that's kind of how this is going to work and how the progression system is in order to get these immortal players. Obviously, when the full game comes out, we'll have more details and we'll know actually what all these programs and what you have to do to get them. But this is this is the basic. This is just generalization of what you're going to have to do. There's kind of a few steps, and I'm sure there's going to be other ways to get progress, not just by these programs, but maybe doing certain missions or statistical missions with other players that revolve around the Immortals and the teams that they played for. So let me know what you guys think about these Immortal players and the other programs in Diamond Dynasty. And if you think this is a good system, but since we're here, let's talk about Immortal players and basically how they are rated. So first we got Babe Ruth. This card looks absolutely ridiculous. I wouldn't be surprised if you have to get every other Immortal player in order to get Babe Ruth. But the way that these ratings work, so Immortal players are basically taking the ratings from the player's best season and putting it into one. So basically, like their career highs from each season and combining it together. So right now, a live series player uses the last three years to make a rating. A legend or flashback card is normally that one year that's on the card. And then these immortal cards are the best of the best. So for example, with Babe Ruth, 
1927. He had 60 home runs. So they take his power from 1927. In 1923, I believe, he had 17 stolen bases. So they take his speed from 1927. And they combine all this. So they take every single season, their career highs, and put it into one card. And that makes the immortal player. So they're going to be definitely the best players in the game for sure. And these are just some of them that they show. This Babe Ruth card looks absolutely amazing. 125 contact versus righties and lefties. Power versus righties and lefties. 108 vision. Definitely going to be a tough out. Then we got the Bob Gibson card. Who has ridiculous stamina. Great hit per nine and K per nine numbers at 99. And then the 83 walk per nine. And the thing about these cards also. And these are every single card. They now show the pitch velocity. So that's pretty nice. And with the Immortal Pitchers. They take the best velocities. Kind of like the hitting for hitters. So... Gibson, 97 mile per hour fastball was his high. And then like with a change up, I guess 86 was his lowest. So there's going to be some nice differentials with these immortal pitchers. And hopefully there's more than one. But the last guy we got is obviously Vladimir Guerrero. And once again, this card looks amazing. Ridiculous contact numbers, ridiculous power numbers, and overall great feeling. Like these immortal players... Whoever gets them first, like has a full immortal team, they're going to have one crazy team. But that pretty much covers it for these immortal players and how the rating system works for them and pretty much how they're going to be obtainable. Obviously, when the game comes out, we'll have more details. We're going to know exactly what type of missions we have to do and which programs we have to do in order to get the immortal players that we want. But let me know what you guys think about this. Do you guys like these immortal players being you know the end game players the best players in the game and how they are earned or would you rather just be able to buy these players i like this system i like earning my players i know some people are not going to play that much to be able to get these players but i think it's a good system so let me know what you guys think we got some more diamond dynasty news coming out throughout this week and some other news from some previous streams that we have yet to talk about so stay tuned for that thank you guys for watching and i'm out